Hi, welcome to Phenomenal Foodies on Hot Chocolate Hits. Today I'm going to be interviewing Christy Denny, aka the girl who ate everything. Her blog is full of 500 plus incredible recipes from appetizers, main courses, and desserts. So if you haven't checked her blog out already, click the link here to see her blog. And let's get started. Okay, so my first question is, what got you interested in cooking? Like, are there people that you looked up to as a child or growing up or... Um, I always loved cooking. I wouldn't say there was like someone specific that I looked up to. I mean, my family, I'm the youngest of 10, so we always cooked a lot so we had to feed everybody. So um, that's probably what spawned my love of cooking. I like to eat a lot, so <laughs> um, I probably didn't start cooking until I got married and, well, a little bit in college. And then when I got married, I have had this huge husband, you know, he's 6'6", six, six, 250, and he just ate a ton, and I'm like, I have to figure out a way to feed this guy. <laughs> <laughs> so, but since you have such a big family, like, cooking can sometimes become a chore. So, how do you ensure, like, how do you make sure that it doesn't? As long as I'm trying new recipes, it, like, ignites the fire of cooking in me. If I'm cooking the same things over and over, like, growing up, we always had spaghetti on Sundays, you know, like, pork chops on Mondays. We have the same thing every every day of the week. So if, when I try new things, that keeps me excited. Like, oh, I found this awesome new dish, you know. It's really good. Yeah. So do you do that on a daily basis? Like, do you do, you do new, new recipes every day? or? Um, honestly, we don't eat a lot of the same thing twice. <laughs> I mean, we eat a lot of new recipes. And unfortunately, a lot of them, I mean, most of them turn out. But, um, you know, if I'm just sick of trying new recipes that aren't working, I'll just cook, like, chicken parmesan, which I know everyone will love and yeah. no one will complain about. So, um, usually on Sundays, I sit down and I, like, plan out the week of, like, new recipes I want to try, maybe, like, one that I know everyone likes. So Sunday I plan it out and then Monday I go grocery shopping and just cook. I usually do, you know, a couple new main dishes. I always try something sweet because that's what makes me happy. So. <laughs> so is there like a source, like where do you get most of your recipes from? Like your head or from the internet, Pinterest? Everywhere. Like I do Pinterest, but I feel like everybody is on Pinterest. So like I feel like we're all cooking the same thing. So I, I do get inspiration from there, but I don't always cook from there. My favorite recipes are recipes that are family recipes that people are like, this is the best, you know, the best pizza I've ever had. My mom made it for years, you know. I love those recipes that, like, have a story, and those are my yeah. favorite. So with the, the new, your baby, like you just recently had a baby, how do you find the time to plan meals, to blog, and to come up with all the recipes? Oh, this one, this question is from Candy Max, the YouTube user Candy Max. Candy Max, um, well, I, it's definitely been a challenge, I will say. <laughs> um, the fifth child has thrown me for a loop, but they have to eat too, so <laughs> I always find, I mean, I find time to cook for them, but it's definitely like, I always cook, but nest blogging, I've definitely slowed down a little bit because she's only a month old, my baby. So I've always had the philosophy that my family comes first. So I'm not on the computer during the day. Well, except for now. <laughs> <laughs> when um, they're awake, I, I feel like you should be in the moment. So like when you're with your kids, you're with your kids. You're playing on the floor with them. And at night, you know, when they're in bed, that's when I do my blogging and it's kind of like a break for me. It's not, I don't see it as like a chore or work. I see it as a break. Mm -hmm. It's kind of therapy to write out your thoughts and, you know, it's fun. That's yeah. why I do this. <laughs> so, so you write a lot as well in your blog. So wh where, what got you interested in writing, interested in writing, especially considering you have like a background in computer science. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Um, well, I, I wouldn't consider myself a writer. I feel like I'm just, I write how I would speak to you or to anyone else. Mm -hmm. I'm just kind of venting as, you know, some people say, I mean, if it was an English paper, it wouldn't be the best paper of my blog post, but I'm just writing how I'm thinking. And sometimes that's random and all over the place, but that's okay. But yeah, my um, computer science background has helped me a ton in blogging. Because I can go behind the scenes if I don't like the color of something or if I just want to add something, I could tweak the code. And sometimes I break it and want to cry. <laughs> but yeah, it definitely has, you know, been this blessing to have that 
background of computer science. And that's always important because a lot of people struggle with, with figuring out what to do and in the end they just get people to do it for them. I know and that's, I mean, for me, if you have to, that's fine, but if you can do it yourself, I mean, it's so much easier to do it yourself than wait for someone to do what, mm -hmm. do something for you. So then what inspired you to start a food blog? Um, that's kind of a, uh, people don't always like the answer that I give to that, or they don't expect it. So five years ago, my sister passed away, mm -hmm. and so we were all kind of struggling with it because it just happened suddenly. And so all my family was back in Arizona, and I was here, and they were all kind of dealing with it together, and I was in Florida, which is thousands of miles away from Arizona. And I was, every time I got in the kitchen and made like a family recipe, it made me feel closer to them and made me kind of, you know, feel better about things. So it's kind of a sad story, yeah. but that's, that's honestly what, how it all came about. Why I started a blog, because I was like, oh, let's, I'm going to start a food blog and organize all our family recipes and just so we can always look them up instead of calling mom, although she likes when I call her. <laughs> so then you take all the pictures yourself too? I do, and that's definitely like a learning process, as you probably know. Like my first ones are awful. I still have some of the original ones on there, and they, <laughs> they are scary. So I've learned a lot through photography, and that's been also a fun thing for me to explore and research about, you know, and I'm still learning, obviously. I have a lot to learn, but but it's come a long way. Because I love your pictures, and I mean, it's really hard to, when you take a picture, everything has to be perfect. So did you learn from somewhere, or did it just, like, did you just develop with it over time? I just developed with it, like, I found for me, like, in the back, in my backyard, like underneath my porch, it has the perfect lighting. Like it's shaded, but it still has lots of natural light. And so that's how I learned to, that was a good place for me. And I like my pictures kind of blown out, like, um, <laughs> like white in the background. And that gave me that feel. And then I, you know, I got a nicer lens. That helps a lot, a nicer camera. But it's all about lighting, honestly, natural lighting and, you know, aperture. I researched aperture and all that stuff to, you know, make them sharper and... Yeah. Yeah, you know, you yeah. know you, same mm -hmm. thing. <laughs> yeah, it always works better when you, like, take something outside and you take pictures rather than, uh, like, take them... For me, like, whenever I... If I want to take the best pictures, I always do them outside where the lighting yeah. is best. And you can't do them when it's dark either because... No, or yeah. rainy because it's all blue, you know, yeah. and it gives the blue tint, which you can fix, but I try not to edit my pictures a ton because you can you can tell when someone has taken a picture and totally edited yeah. it. <laughs> some background music. Yeah, so you, you've done some work with Tablespoon and uh, I forgot the other place, but you, you mentioned that on your About page, so how what was that like? Did you learn from any experiences or what what kind of experiences did you have there? Absolutely. Um, so they came to me and said, would you like to freelance write for us? And I said, sure. And I didn't know what I was getting myself into, but so they would basically we'd plan a couple months out our content and they'd say, do you have any ideas? Let's do something fallish. Or um, they would have ideas themselves and just say, you know, come up with, I remember one time I had to do a gusher inside of a meatball, which was <laughs> so weird to me, but yeah. They, they were trying to think of, like, you know, different ideas. And so some of them were out of the box, and that taught me to, like, kind of think out of the box. And yeah. um, they're a great company to work with. So so uh, you've done some work with the Betty Crocker Kitchens as well. So what was that like for you? I loved working with them. Um, Tablespoon and Betty Crocker, they're all kind of divisions of General Mills. So... They asked me to come out to their kitchens and just, we did a video, um, a Valentine's Day video, and I got to see their kitchens and like, they have a taste testing station. It was just a dream. I mean, anything you can think of that if you're a foodie, oh, they have, it's just, I would love that job because they're always yeah. cooking. Come taste this, come do this. Oh my gosh. So yeah. I loved going there. It's in Minnesota, the Betty Crocker Kitchens, and it's amazing. Do they have like a proper 
a corporation or is it like a building just for them or, or is it kind of scattered? Oh my gosh, it is its own city. <laughs> I, <laughs> the employees always joke that you don't, they don't want you to leave. They have like a, I mean, they have a hairdresser, they have a doctor, they have coffee, they have a store all in the Betty Crock or in the General Mills building. And so you don't have to leave. You, anything you want is there. That's almost like Google. I've been to Google, like the Google office once, and that was really cool because they have like a humongous cafeteria and they have everything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, um, so you like what? What are your husband and children's role in your blog? Well, my children are always in the kitchen with me because, like I said, I mean, I, I'm not on my computer during the day, but I obviously have to cook during the day. And so they help me with that, and they smell everything, they pour everything. I'm a germ freak, though, so I make sure everyone, like, washes their hands, no one's licking, you know, but they definitely are in the kitchen helping me. Um, my husband, he gives me the okay on <laughs> if things are good or not, you know. Yeah. But sometimes our opinions vary, because <laughs> I'll think something is amazing, and I'll be like, uh-uh, you know. Yeah. So... <laughs> But usually I trust his opinion because we consider ourselves both cities and when we go out to eat, I mean, we just, we love to eat. So, so, so he, since he's a football player, do you make a lot of stuff for the Super Bowl and stuff? How do you know he's a football player? I did some research. <laughs> yeah, so he plays for the Dolphins. So he, um, we do a lot of football food and like yesterday he had a game, so we're gone all day. So mm -hmm. I'll do something like in the crock pot. So when he comes home, he's just starving because he doesn't like to eat right before the game. And so I'll have like a dip ready and then something in the crock pot. Or last night we did turkey burgers because he loves burgers, you know? Yeah. So, Who are some of the coolest people that you've met in the blogging world? Because obviously you go to a lot of those conferences and all. I, I've only been to one oh. and it blew my mind. Like I was so excited because I... <laughs> I was the nerd in the corner that wanted to meet everyone because I hadn't been to anything. And so I met the Pioneer Woman. Oh, wow. I, I met um, Jenny from Picky Palette. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's so many. Any Anyone that was there said their blog, and I'm kind of not a stalker, but, like, I know I look at food all day long. So <laughs> I know everyone, pretty much everyone's blog out there. So I felt like I knew everyone, and I had all these new friends. So That's so cool. So fun. And what are, what are the highs and lows of blogging for you? Oh my gosh. So definitely the highs are people that I get a lot of comments. I get a lot of emails and a lot of comments every day. And I try to respond to them every day. But um, when people say, this was so amazing, you know, everyone loved it. I was a hit at the party. That makes me happy. But then I get the weirdest emails yeah. from people <laughs> who... I can't even, like, start to tell you the emails I get. I mean, I, I should pull some up and show you. No, I can't do that. But <laughs> just, um, I don't know, or just people that, this was awful, but I changed this and this and this and this. Okay, so you didn't really do my recipe. So what advice would you give to people who want to start a blog or who have interest in cooking and want to do, pursue a blog or do something about that? I get a lot of emails or just people calling asking, you know, what do I do if I want to start a blog? And my thing would be, if you are passionate about it, then go for it. But like, I feel like a lot of people start and then just give up on it if they're not successful right away. You know what I mean? So I feel like if you are, if you are passionate, then you just go for it, do it, like plan it out and you'll be successful, but it does, it takes time. You know, I'm, I've had this blog for five years, you know, and no one knew about it for probably the first year at least, or two years, you know. But I wasn't doing it for anyone else. I was doing it for my family, you know. Yeah. So, so that's so, advice, yeah. So do you think you're going to do uh, YouTube videos or anything, or are you just going to stick to blogging? I know that that's like the up-and-coming thing. But I'm so awkward on videos, so maybe it's just something I need to You're do. not. You're not awkward. <laughs> I'm so awkward. I did, like I said, I did that. Okay, Gracie. Mm -hmm. I did that video for Betty Crocker, and it was the first one I had ever done, and I can't even watch it now. Like, I just cringe when I watch it. I saw it. It was so good. 
my gosh, it was so bad. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I just was so nervous. My voice was shaking and I just wasn't myself. So well. yeah. What's next for you then? Just continuing to vlog? Greasy back right here. Um, I've been looking into like creating an app for my blog because people, you know, when they're at the grocery store, just to make it easier to look for recipes. Mm -hmm. And then I do feel like, like I said, I do feel like the videos are the next thing. That's what people want to see. But yeah. I just have to figure out a way to do it. <laughs> what do you think is like the thing that attracts people to your blog out of everything? Like, you know, I have no idea. It's the selling. No, <laughs> the selling. I seriously don't. I mean, because people always say, um, or just people ask, what What can I do to be successful? Like, why do you think people, I, I don't know. I wish I could tell you. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think, like, um, if, if you have a really good recipe, people will come. And if you're consistent in your recipes, I guess. Like, some people just post everything. I seriously post probably 20% of what I make. Wow. Because <laughs> I, I'm really, like, this week alone, I've made probably, I don't know, five or six recipes. And none of they were okay, but nothing that I'm, like, still really passionate about or think that, wow, that was the greatest recipe. So, so, then you must cook a lot if that's only 20%. I really do cook a lot, and that's why I've had this baby, and it looks like I haven't posted as much, but it's just the stuff I've made, maybe, because, I don't know, it just hasn't been that great <laughs> to me. <laughs> okay. Well, that's all I have for you. Thank you so much for uh, willing to do this. Oh, you're welcome. It's been fun to meet you. You're fun. <laughs> Thank your you. Your blog's awesome. So have you, have you seen it? I have. And you're, you do videos, too. Well, you, thank you. You should give me tips. <laughs> <laughs> no. Thank you so much, Christy. It was really nice to get to know a little bit more about you. For my viewers, don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you soon with another phenomenal foodie.